Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about Yukon Marquette, which happened on February 17th. These are two of the obviously best teams in the nation. Yukon won pretty decisively, but we're going to look at this actually from Marquette's perspective and discuss what I think the biggest question is for Marquette and what they can do to really solve that potential issue and put them in a competitive space with teams like Yukon, which I believe they will be by the end of the year because Shaka Smart's a great coach. Let's go. Okay, so the big issue for Marquette is they don't have that many shooters on the court at one time. Okay? They have, maybe you could argue, three shooters in this bunch. You could have 23, two, and then Kolek as their quote-unquote shooters. And so one of the issues that Marquette runs into is when they have non-shooter lineups like they currently have, that they have to almost, they have to force the defense to adjust to their shooters other than being just stationary, staying on the output because you can help off of non-shooters like the post 13 and then over here number four as well okay so Marquette does a great job and they actually start the game off this which is how you know the Shaka Smart is aware that that's something that they need to go to and helps them space out the defense is you need to have plays that target trying to get essentially help defense allowing it to get shooters open so this play right here we can see that there's this original screen set and 23 is going to set kind of a fake screen for Kolek here, but then he's really coming off and 13's turning around and setting the screen on his dude. And this puts the defense in a tough area because this guy right here, this defender, has to go all the way from here from stopping the ball to a close out of here. And my guess is Shaka Smart doesn't really want him to drive this, but instead wants him to look to find an open shot as soon as he catches that ball in the first place. And then one of the big reasons that UConn went on, went on such a big run is because they were able to help off of non-shooters and they're so efficient on offense that if you take away any efficiency on defense, that they're gonna get a lot of good looks. Okay, so here's our second example. I really like this. I don't think this was intentional. This was kind of just in the flow of things, but you have two who's a good shooter and you have Igadaro who's not a good shooter, but is coming up to the side of the ball and you fake against the screen. I absolutely love this little jab step right here because it makes the defense react to it. They have to respect this threat of the drive, and then you're able to take one step on the other side, and 35 also respects the drive and or the post, so it makes them hard to close out to that, and you get a clean look from three. This is a great example of what Marquette can do to get better looks against teams like you. Then we can also see this. This is a very similar concept from what we saw moments ago. Okay, we see screen set right here. A, which forces help right here and then instantly another screen set right here which is ideally when this is switched I don't know if that's intentional to switch or not probably not but Kolek does a good job reacting and punishing this aggressive help right here okay so he's trying to jump this right here and Kolek just says okay I'll go to the other side and Igadaro does a great job switching his body around and this is another good look from Marquette again probably the kind of shots that Marquette wants because then the overarching issue with Marquette is that if you don't have shooters in the game, it's going to really struggle to have open good looks, which I'm going to make a separate video on that entirely. But in this instance, this is Marquette's quote unquote good shooting lineup. Okay, the only non-shooter, they have one non-shooter in the game into the post, Igadaro, and we're going to see how they get better, more space and more opportunities because of that. So overall in this game, Marquette struggles quite a bit, but anytime you can get athletically Igadaro working one-on-one, -on -one, I think that's a good matchup. So I honestly, what I would prefer is Igadaro just back this up and try and attack Klingon going downhill. But that being said, he does attack in general, and I'm not a fan of floaters by and large, but one-on-one -on -one with athletic ability, Igadaro is gonna win a lot of those battles. Then simply a few possessions later, still we have Igadaro as the only quote-unquote non-shooter. One big asterisk here that's really important is that gold is in the game and gold is kind of like their backup post player but they put him in the game a lot this game simply because he represents more of a shooting threat on the perimeter he forces the defender to stay attached to him okay so you get ball screen and right here as soon as this happens you get essentially defenses that are more worried about the perimeter means there's no help and so there's less room for air among the two ball screen okay so 35 on defense is worried about Igadaro setting another screen or going down to the rim, whatever it is. And you give this a little bit of space and you have athletes to get downhill. That is a good look for Marquette as well. And frankly, it's going to be a foul a lot of the time. But getting to this position 
is a good situation for market. So this is definitely one of the things that Shaka Smart identified early is that UConn was sending extra help so you have to have shooters on the floor. And I love this concept. This is something you can see from Draymond Green all the time is you run a shooter off this dribble handoff right here, this fake dribble handoff in this situation, and you get an athletic post going downhill. This is 100% a matchup that Marquette wants. Either just go, frankly, finish over this dude or you're gonna have open passes around. Frankly, I'd rather have them just go attack this guy but if you're gonna kick it out, ideally put it on target, but still by and large a good possession for Marquette. All right, again, semi in transition, but you're forcing closeouts, but so much more stress on the defense. Right now you have five on five, everyone is matched up. However, because you have shooters, it's so much more of a penalty if there's slight miscommunication. So right now, number two isn't sure essentially who to guard. His player is technically Kolek right here, but you have motion going around, you have good spacing by Marquette, and one slight miscommunication, he heads to the opposite side, and this dude clears out unintentionally, I don't know, maybe, but it leaves Cole like wide open, and this is another good look for Marquette because you have shooters on the floor. So despite this being like a really difficult game for Marquette and like the end result wasn't very good, they still have a lot of opportunity to learn from this game because they a they play really good defense and if you have lineups on the court that allow for shooting on offense or good looks on offense you have a lot of potential to close this gap with UConn and become a much better team in the process. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another one that talks about Marquette and where they struggle or their their strengths on offense feel free to check out this link right here. Bless.